and we are live how's it going everyone welcome back to the punch perfect boxing channel before we get going today please make sure to like the video comment your thoughts down below and please subscribe to the channel so today i'm going to be talking about the lightweight division because it feels like there's a lot of rumors floating about there's a lot of back and forth between teams and fighters and you know i kind of want to paint a picture of what could be happening in 2022 because i feel like this division is just loaded from top to bottom at the minute with not just elite fighters in obviously lomachenko Devin Haney, Tank, um, George Cambosis, Ryan Garcia, you know, the top of the division. There's guys coming through in the likes of William Zapeda, Frank Martin, um, you know, Kashawn Davis by the end of 2022, I think will be knocking on the door. Um, and then kind of contender type guys in Isaac Cruz, in Javier Fortuna, in Jojo Diaz. Um, there's just a lot of names in this division. I feel like it's one of the deepest divisions, but we need to see them fight each other. And today I just want to speak about what I kind of see happening for each of the, the main guys and then just lower down, you know, what could happen for those guys as well. So I think we'll start off at the top of the tree, which is George Cambosis Jr. He's put himself at, at the top of the pile after that win against Teofimo Lopez. Now, his options kind of feel like they're wide open. He has restricted it slightly by saying that he wants a big stadium fight in Australia. So whoever he chooses will have to go to Australia to make that fight happen. He's deserved that. He warrants that. But obviously, just in terms of fighters being willing to go over there, that kind of remains to be seen. From a Devin Haney point of view, he has said that, you know, the thing that makes going to Australia difficult at the minute, if you followed the, the Novak Djokovic story and everything is, you know, any type of mandates... Devin Haney has come out and said that he's willing to to obligate towards that. So that wouldn't be a, a barrier stopping them from fighting. So, you know, the main issue for me with these two guys is it's the fight we need to see in the division in the most, in my opinion. I actually think there's a fight that I'm going to get onto in a minute that is the one I actually want to see the most. But in terms of what needs to happen in this division, this is the one. This is undisputed. This clears up the WBC rubbish. This is the one that has to happen in my opinion and there's all this talk back and forth from both sets of fans George Cambosa's fans are like oh Devin Haney doesn't want to come to Australia Devin Haney fans are like oh George Cambosa wants to avoid him for an easier payday um, and I think both camps are wrong to be honest when you read between the lines you know of their exchanges on Twitter no one's made an offer to anyone so there's no ducking at this stage. The main issue is, I think Eddie Hearn has pr apparently been waiting on a big offer from Saudi Arabia or the Middle East. Um, and if that's true, I understand that because he'll want want that to front the money. But George has said that he wants to fight in Australia. So if that is the case, why are they not making an offer? You know, Devin Haney said in one of the exchanges, oh, you wanted us to make an offer. OK, bet. Well, I'll speak to Eddie. You know, George Cambosa said, well, you guys haven't made me an offer yet. You know... There isn't, there's been no offer made, so no one's ducking each other. And considering that Cambosis won at the end of November and Devin Haney at the beginning of December, why there's been no form of offer made is beyond me at the minute. And I feel like these two, this is the only fight that matters for each other. And if they don't get it on, you know, if they don't have some kind of agreement, don't work towards some kind of deal in the next two to three months, you know... All of these governing bodies are just going to start enforcing things on Cambosis, and then it becomes impossible. And Haney gets phased out again. His fan base don't want that. Cambosis will be fine because he'll be involved in big fights and big money elsewhere. You know, I just feel like they need to get this over the line now and need to start working towards it. But will it happen? I'm not so sure. I think the other main player is Vasil Lomachenko. We'll now move on to him and kind of what happens for him. I think in terms of his position. You know, Bob Arum has said that no one knows Haney on Australia. Lomachenko is the name that Cambosis needs to fight. Um, Bob has proven in the last couple of years he's not willing to pay up big for some of his elite fighters. And I don't see how he does that for Cambosis either. I don't see how he pays Cambosis a lot of money to fight Lomachenko. It's just not in Bob's nature of his kind of recent... His recent... Um, displays with you know even Tiafimo and, and Lomachenko and Tiafimo and Cambosis Crawford at points as well you know he's not always willing to pay up the big bucks so I don't see how it happens on a on a kind of voluntary basis the way I do see it happening I've said this before is if the WBO intervene and call the mandatory I think the longer this goes on that becomes more of a possibility and ultimately 
I just slightly lean towards Cambosis versus Vasil Lomachenko being the fight that we see in 2022 first and foremost. Um, you know, Lomachenko, it did seem like the Shakur Stevenson fight was there for him, but now that it's not, I don't think that necessarily that, you know, that sort of clears the path for Lomachenko to look elsewhere. And I think legacy is a big thing for him, so undisputed. So he'll want to go after Cambosis and then Haney, in my opinion. So I just see it being um, Cambosis versus versus um, Lomachenko in the in the kind of middle to sort of later part of this year. Um, Lomachenko has been rumoured to, you know, Tank Davis has come out and said that his team, um, Calvin Ford especially, has come out and said that that's the fight they're looking for in pay-per-view on Showtime. That's really interesting, but again, does Lomachenko take that when he's pursuing a, a legacy? Does he see it as the right move next at his age? I'm not so sure, but that would be a brilliant fight. Outside of that for Tank Davis, I think Rolly Romero, uh, now that he's been cleared of all his accusations, I think that fight becomes an option again next for him, and I think it's the fight that will happen. Um, so that's kind of how I see those top four guys being matched in the next few fights. I think the other guy is Ryan Garcia. What happens for him? They tried to make the Isaac Cruz fight and that fell through because Isaac Cruz wouldn't accept the contract without being paid if Ryan Garcia pulled out, which is a fair enough clause in my opinion for anyone that's saying that it's unfair. I think it's completely fair with Ryan's you know recent track track record. I think it completely makes sense. You know what will happen happen from now. There were a couple of names thrown about, and I didn't think any of them were particularly great. But Oscar De La Hoya said that he's got a big fight lined up for Ryan Garcia. Now, I've had a little look at who that could be. I think Tevin Farmer is going to be the opponent. The reason I say that is Tevin Farmer hasn't fought anyone really since Jojo Diaz, but he's been active on Twitter. He's recently said that 135 is where he'll be campaigning. And he needs a big fight to get back in the mix. And I think it's going to be Tevin Farmer. So they've said Ryan Garcia around sort of early April time. I think we'll see Ryan Garcia versus Tevin Farmer, which is a good fight. I think Ryan Garcia wins it, but a good opponent on his comeback. And then we'll sort of, we'll see what happens from there. So at the top end of the division, I think we see Cambosis against Lomachenko. For Haney, I'm not so sure unless they come to a deal soon. Um, for Tank Davis, I think Rolly Romero is the next opponent, opponent, but they're trying to explore the Lomachenko fight, which is interesting. And then for Ryan Garcia, it's Tevin Farmer. Below those guys, the sort of next crop of fighters, um, you look at Michelle Rivera. I think him and Isaac Cruz makes an awful lot of sense. Um, the winner of that can can sort of move on. I'd like to see that fight happen next on PBC. I think it's a really good matchup. And I think Isaac Cruz has a lot to offer in this division. So yeah, that's one that I'd love to see. You know, Jojo Diaz and Javier Fortuna, I think they're now in a place of being viable opponents for, for people. And I think, you know, who could they be viable opponents for? Well, I think William Zapeda is someone that in this in this talk of all the young lightweights, I think William Zapeda is one that needs to be given an awful lot of respect, and I think he's very, very dangerous. And Golden Boy will be wanting to push him big this year. Now, I think a Jorge Linares, I know he's fighting Abdullah, um, Abdullayev soon. The winner of that could be an option for him, but I also think Jojo Diaz or Javier Fortuna would make an awful lot of sense for Zapeda to move up to that next level. So I see that being a you know a real option. Um, and those are fights that, again, I'd just love to see all of those matchups. Um, just having a think of who else could be involved around there. Frank Martin is a guy on PBC that I'm really high on, part of the Errol Spence team. Who does he look to move up? He's going up the WBA route by the looks of things. So I'm sure they'll look for like a, I know he's not at that weight anymore, but like a Miguel Vasquez or someone like that. I think he'll be someone that's in the conversation next. So really interesting time for the division. Um, some exciting fights. Let me know down below who you think people will fight the fights you want to see. And remember to subscribe to the channel and like the video. I'll catch you next time.